Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight we're working on Module 5, Lesson Number 35. And in this new part of uh, Module 5, we are going to be working with multiplication of fractions. The very first lesson here, uh, Lesson 35, we are going to represent the multiplication as sort of uh, repeated addition. And we'll do a couple of different problems that showcase uh, that part and the associative properties of doing this kind of multiplication with fractions. So let's take a look at one of our problems from tonight's homework. Problem number one on tonight's homework asks us to draw and label a tape diagram to show the following are true. 8 thirds equals 4 times 2 thirds equals 4 times 2 thirds. Okay, let's see if we can figure this one out. Uh, let's see, first we need to draw a tape diagram of 8 thirds. So let me see, I'm going to draw a tape diagram, let's see. Let me draw it out this way, let's see. We need eight copies of these, so let's see, I will need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and each of those is a third. Awesome. One third, one third, one third, one third. Okay, let's see, so that's eight thirds. Let's see, is that the same as four times two thirds? Well, I could make groupings of those two thirds, right? I could say that, right, is two-thirds, all right, and I could do the same with the next two, right, that is two-thirds, sorry for my handwriting, it's not easy with the stylus, that is also two-thirds, oh, it's getting worse, and let's see this last one, I can group those together, right, that is two more thirds, And let's see, is that the same as 4? Well, actually, that is, right? So if I think of it this way, right, if I think of it at this level, this is just 4 copies of 2 thirds, right? This 2 thirds, this 2 thirds, this 2 thirds, and this 2 thirds is really the same as 4 copies of 2 thirds, or really 4 times 2 thirds, right? Either way, I'm going to end up with 8 thirds, whether I count them up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? Whether I group them into pairs, into 2 thirds, and have four copies of those, one, two, three, four, right? Or I said four copies of two of the thirds, four times two of the thirds. Awesome. I think all of those are true. So let's take a look at another problem and see if we can push this a little further. In problem number two, we're asked to do something slightly different. We're asked to write the expression in unit form to solve. Now, it may, be, it may have been a little while since we've written things in unit form, but basically that just means we're going to write out some of the words. We're going to write out the units. So let's take a look at our problem number 2a. That is 10 times 2 fifths. Well, okay, if we wrote that out in unit form, I would say that that is 10 times 2, and then I'm going to write out my unit, fifths. 10 times 2 fifths. Agreed? We would read this as 10 times 2 fifths, and we can write it as 10 times 2 fifths. And now we can notice the associative property here that we can just multiply the 10 times the 2. So let's see, 10 times 2 would be, let's see, 20, and that's 20 fifths. And amazingly, we're done. We can write that as 20 fifths. Let's see, what is that? That's 20 fifths. And we're done with our problem. That's all it took. So sometimes writing it out in unit form helps clarify what we're up to. It also helps clarify how we're going to be able to use multiplication and the associative property here to get to our answer, 20 fifths. Let's take a look at one more problem tonight. Problem number three asks us simply to solve. And so we've got, we've got the problem here. I'll pick one of the more difficult ones, 14 times 7 tenths. So, as with the last problem, I could go ahead and write this out in unit form. This would be 14 times 7 tenths, right? I can write out my unit. And that clarifies for me that what I really need to do in this problem is multiply 14 times 7. And I don't remember there being any easy 14 times 7 uh, that I memorized. So I'm going to go ahead and do that over here on the side. 14 times 7, let's see. That means I'd multiply 4 1s times 7 to get 28. So I'd put the 8 here, and the 2 is actually a in the tens place. And then I would go ahead and multiply the next uh, column over the next place value. I'd multiply my 110 times 7, and that would be 7 tens plus 2 more tens, and that would give me 9 
tens. So that's 98. So I can go back over here and say this is the same as 98 tenths or 98 tenths, right? And that's, in fact, what I'm going to write as my answer, 98 tenths. Because, again, I can use that associative property. Once I pull out this out of unit form, 14 times 7 tenths, then I can go ahead and do that multiplication, remember my unit, and figure out my answer. So that's three different ways that we're using multiplication and the associative property with fractions. I hope this has been helpful, and I hope you join me again next time on Mr. Kong Has Problems.